Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of AI Powered PM. I'm Todd, and I, today we're going to be going over Visual Studio Code and connecting to an ADO MCP server. Uh, this video is all about that action, so we're just going to jump right into using it. But if you want a better explanation about MCP, watch this short right here. Okay, let's jump into it. This is a GitHub uh, project called Azure DevOps MCP. And before we install, let's go over the prerequisites to make sure you've got everything working on your machine that's necessary. So you're going to need VS Code, uh, Node.js, uh, Azure CLI, and then VS Code in an empty folder. And then we're going to run Azure Login. So let's do that. This is an empty folder. Have Copilot installed. How you launch it is here. How you sign up for it is up on GitHub. So you just have to register your account. It's free at least limited usage. Um, but anyway, that's this is where we need to be at. So let's go to the terminal and let's log into Azure. That's my account. And select your subscription. Okay, what's next? A one-click install. That sounds pretty good. Let's try that. All right, let's try this at the command line. All right, that's great. Now let's do the rest of this manually so I can show you how this works. Um, we're going to need a few different folders here. So let's do a new folder. This one will be .vs code. Okay, VS code. And let's do another, oop, not there. Let's do another folder. And this one is going to be dot GitHub. Okay. And in the VS code, let's do a new file and let's call this one mcp.json. And then in GitHub, let's do a new file and we will call this one copilot instructions.md. Now let's go back to the GitHub project and let's copy in these values. So this is for MCP. Okay. And let's save it. All right. And then let's go to the copilot instructions file And we'll uh, add it and then let's look at it real quick. So it's what are its instructions? It says acts like an intelligent coding agent assistant. The prompt for resources. Um, prioritize DevOps MCP server tools. Add new tools if you need. Okay, so pretty pretty basic, but you can always come in here and customize this prompt if you want particular behavior. Like I've seen people do it to where they specify that they want the output to return like in a table format. So, you know, we'll leave it for default for this particular demo, uh, but you can always come in here and change it. That's sort of the power of it. So now we're at MCP JSON. Let's, let's start this. I'm sorry, I didn't capture it, but um, the first time you run this, you'll get a uh, pop-up and it'll ask you to enter in your project. It looks like since I did that, it updated the configuration file, so it's AI powered PM1. Um, so now, if you click down here on the tools, you can see the MCP server is now loaded. So you get an idea of all the different commands that are available to you. And there's a lot. So you can do stuff on build and get status and run builds. Um, you can do stuff on, you know, pull requests, which would be, which would be nice, especially when you're doing comments and stuff too. replying to comments that'd be pretty good. Um, let me just scan through here and see what other things we can do. You can search wikis. Very cool. You can add a test plan. I don't work a ton with test plans, but you could. So let's uh, let's do a few things. Let's ask it, what are the common things you can do with Azure DevOps MCP? Oh, I've seen this before. Okay, we need to uncheck some of these. 
Oh, can't include more than 128. Okay, so I'm gonna make this window bigger since this is how we'll be interacting with it, so it'll be easier to view. Let's just ask it about Sprint 3 here. What items are here? Okay, I'm prompted to run a command. Okay, here we go. So, great, it did, it did that perfect. It pulled back all the different user stories and the tasks assigned to them and um, how many were active and how many were closed. Let's go ahead and ask it, um, tell me about the hours and organize by person. Let's see if it can figure that out. This is pretty nice. Okay, so it, it listed out the timeline. It gave me totals. Uh, it, it organized user stories by areas. Um, it talked about how many things were completed and in progress and not started. Let's see. Uh, can you break this down by user? Or right, person, person. Good, so it did break it down by person. I had to click through a few things and it had to try a few different approaches, but it did work. Um, let's go for broke here. Let's ask it, show me the work broken down by out, by users, by, pre, by person and the hours. That's probably a terrible prompt. Okay, now that's pretty cool. That was worth the wait. So now we've got it broken down by person, uh, user stories and all their tasks, and then original, completed, remaining, etc. And we've also got totals for each person. And my favorite part is this completion status. So this is great. I would have messed up doing this math. And I can't tell you the number of times I've wanted to generate a report like this. But I know there's built-in uh, dashboards within ADO, but this is so nice to be able to generate on the fly. So that's a pretty great way to see where we're at um, with the current iteration or an, or an iteration that we care about. So let's, uh, let's do some write operations. Let's take one of these. Uh, actually, make this easier. Can you include the IDs in this format? Okay. I'm just making it easier for our update here. So let's pick on this task 31. Um, the original estimate was five hours. Um, the remaining is three. We've completed two. So let's say for task 31, please update completed to zero or sorry, five and remaining to zero and change the status to completed. Let's see. Oh no, I've reached the end of my monthly chance. <laughs> That's how it goes in doubles sometimes. I'm not willing to pay for the pro plan. I'll have to wait a few hours or something. Uh, so if you go back through the history, this is task 31. And it shows that, um, you know, it went from active to closed. The remaining work got updated. Same with the completed work. So uh, it, it's under my credentials. So it worked, which is good because we're out of credits. So I got to tell you. That was pretty great. I was very excited to use this product. There was a few things like you can only have 128 commands, whatever, you know, that's fine. I can live with that. But overall, um, I think it's awesome. You know, this is how I'm gonna interact with ADO going forward. I've got a small project. It's got two configuration files. I can open it up and my front end can be an AI that I work with. And then not only does it just you know, do read operations, but I can put it in agent mode and have it do stuff for me. So I view this as something that will be a force multiplier for me. And I think I'm just going to get used to working with ADO uh, in this manner. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.